Hello, welcome to BC 3030, week three. I am instructor Howard, and this week we are going to be covering chapter 11, which is the female reproductive system. So a few other announcements this week. We will, um, you will have a study guide that will be attached in an email or an announcement that will be sent out for this week's topic. And usually I do cover five cases in the coding um, assessment every week, but this particular lecture will only cover the um, coding and theoretical aspect of it, the, the guidelines, and there is a second lecture or a second recording. If you haven't watched that one already, which is the urinary system, that will cover um, the coding scenarios for this week's coding assessment called Breaking Down Coding Cases Week 3. So I will get started. Here we have a reflection point. These are some things to think about. And um, it asks us in this particular reflection point two questions. One is, what are some common conditions of the female genital system? And since I am recording this for your viewing, I will answer the questions as I go through. And then the second question is, what is the most common office procedure related to the female genital system? And the first answer for uh, the first question um, is reproductive problems such as infertility and um, cancers, sexually transmitted diseases, and things of that nature. There's also could be some issues with breast. And uh, the second one, the answer is colposcopy. I'm going to talk about this in a few minutes. So here we're dealing with the female genitalia and maternity delivery and care. The first term we have is colposcopy. And this means to look or view the vagina. It is used to take biopsies and examination of the genitalia, vagina, and cervix. So I have this word written in medical terminology or typed out in medical terminology for easy memorization. The word copo or the word root copo basically means vagina, and we know scopi is the suffix, which means to look or view. So here is some office procedures and they are all endoscopic when it relates to scopy or colposcopy. We have different procedures and codes depending upon where the surgery or procedure was done. So these are important things to pay attention to when you are viewing your cases and practicing your cases this week. So we are at our very first reflection point. Colposcopy is an examination and or biopsy of the vagina and or vaginal and cervical areas. The codes are located in the endoscopy or endoscopy category within the subheadings. So now we're going to talk about the actual colposcope. Remember, many procedures will use a scope, and it is considered endoscopic. Endo means inner or innermost, and scope means to view. And in this sense, this particular device is specifically designed to view the vagina. And then um, the next picture, we actually see them doing a colposcopy and injecting some probably local anesthesia so that they can possibly remove lesions. And that's one of the reasons a colposcopy is done in the office is to see if the, there are lesions and to remove them for biopsy or later examination. So these procedures are performed in the operating room only or ambulatory surgery center, depending. And then the first one is hysteroscopy. And this is a scope inserted into the uterus. Hystero basically means uterus. And laparoscopy is a scope inserted through the abdomen. So we have the abdomen scope here and the hysteroscope here. And a lot of times they can be used together 
because the provider may want to view the back side of the cervix at the same time he is viewing the uterus. Okay, or back side of the uterus and the inside of the uterus. Okay, so this rule, we have a light up note here, tells us only report it with female genital surgical code if definitive procedure is performed. What that means about a laparoscopy is that if it is done for diagnostic purposes only, then we just pose for the diagnostic laparoscopy, and that's it. When it does convert over to an actual procedure, then we will actually only code for the procedure that was rendered on that day. Okay, here we are at a reflection point. It is asking us, what is the difference between a hysteroscope and a laparoscope? So the answers are the hysteroscope is to view, or it is a scope to view the uterus, and a laparoscope goes through the abdomen. So moving down to maternity care and delivery subsection, divided by the types of services. For instance, antepartum, which is during pregnancy, delivery, postpartum, equals after giving birth, and abortion care. So here's a reflection point related to maternity care. It's asking us, is normal maternity care and delivery reported separately or globally? And that answer is globally because it is an all-inclusive rate, one code for all services. And we will speak more about when to code them separately in a few moments. So now we're talking about maternity care. It begins with the definition and the pronunciation of gestation. This is the process of carrying or being carried in the womb between conception and birth. Fetal gestation period is approximately 266 days or 40 weeks. That is the gestation period. But there is a different calculation for the estimated date of delivery, and it is abbreviated EDD, and that is 280 days from the last menstrual period. So now we have some things to think about related to that information. Why is the expected date of delivery calculated 280 days from the last menstrual period? That answer is because the initial 14 days um, before the period is actually calculated into that uh, window as well. So it's asking us, why might this calculation be inaccurate for certain women? And the answer is because some women do not have a 28-day cycle. You may have a longer cycle or a shorter one. Okay, so trimesters. So it's telling us here about the time frame associated with each um, three, well, I want to say three-month period, three, six, nine. We have three-month period interval during the pregnancy. So it says the gestation period is divided into three periods called trimesters. I have a helpful video to describe the pregnancy um, process on YouTube, and what I will do is send this um, link out to you guys this week in the discussion forum as well so that you can watch the different phases for the gestation period. I know as women, we pretty much know how this process works, but this video does help us as far as giving descriptions of exactly when the heart begins to beat inside of the, you know, what time frame that happens. and when the neck uncurls so that the fetus can look more human. So that's very interesting. So now I want to talk about global package and delivery. Remember, global means that it's all-inclusive. So we have uncomplicated maternity care includes antepartum care, which is before delivery. It includes the delivery, postpartum care after delivery, and the antepartum care also includes initial and subsequent history and physicals, blood pressures, weights, routine urinalysis, fetal heart tones, monthly visits up to 28 weeks, twice a month visits from 29 to 36 weeks, 
and weekly visits from 37 weeks to delivery. So there is everything under the sun that has to do with giving birth in one honest with the rate. Some insurance companies, especially government payers like Medicaid, will generally pay between three to five thousand dollars to the um, gynecologist obstetrician for the um, delivery and birth of a baby. There are only a few services that can be reported separately, and those are services that are not related to antepartum care should be reported separately. Even though the woman is sick, if she I mean, is pregnant, if she comes in and she's sick and she has a cold, then he can charge separately for that. So it says the delivery includes the admission to the hospital with admitting history and physical, management of uncomplicated labor, vaginal or cesarean delivery, and complications are coded separately. So anything that arises outside of normal delivery may be reported separately with descriptions and diagnosis codes about what happened. And the hospital also is paid under an all-inclusive rate. There is a payment made to the provider and a payment made to the hospital. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, postpartum care. This is normal follow-up care for up to six weeks, sometimes a little later if applicable, and, and that is after the delivery. Hospital visits, office visits are included in this. And here are some examples for antepartum or services that are done um, during pregnancy. For instance, amniocentesis. And here's this word, synthesis again. Puncture or remove fluid from the amniosac. This is um, the coded by 59000, and it says here, no, if the same physician provides a service that is not identified as part of antepartum care, that service is reported separately. Ultrasound guidance with this service that can be done together. The amniocentesis always basically needs an ultrasound, so we will code both services. And if you have examples this week, remember, you will definitely need to code for ultrasound and guidance. And it says component coding often is a part of services in this subheading. So it kind of tells us when we um, have to code for some additional things, we have parenthetical notes um, next to those CPT codes that we run into that will tell you to code also and then it will direct us to the additional codes that we need to use. Okay, so now we're going to talk about routine global obstetric care. So the global package is the one code 59400, which is a vaginal delivery. This includes everything that we spoke about, um, antepartum care and, and all of that. Here's the code for cesarean delivery. And then here's a code for vaginal delivery after previous cesarean delivery. And that is abbreviated by the term VBAC. That's exactly what they call it. They don't say VBAC, they say VBAC. And now we have another confusing term. Cesarean delivery following attempted vaginal delivery after previous cesarean delivery. So one thing that we have to pay attention to when we are coding for these types of services are these additional wording. We need to know, is it vaginal after, is it vaginal during, or private, or attempted vaginal, and that's how um, you pick the proper uh, CPT code. It could be close, but not quite, based on that extra information in there. So we have epiviotomies and use of forceps. It is included in the delivery and they are not reported separately. Sometimes a provider can add on a modifier um, to so increase procedural services and things like that to just let them know that he had a difficult time and he had to use forceps, but he's not going to charge extra for using forceps. And our reflection point is asking us, what is an epiviotomy? Well, that is to cut a part of the 
scan in the vaginal area or to make an incision into the perineum. That usually happens to help um, push the baby out, create extra space there. It says physicians provide, and I'm trying to say both words together, physicians provide only portions of global routine care, and then this is how we report this code for vaginal delivery only, cesarean delivery only, and vaginal delivery only after cesarean delivery. That's the VBAC. And then 59620 is the cesarean delivery only. So remember this word, only. And there are some times when we don't know if it was only, and we have to delve a little bit further. But there is one code for if it's a different provider, and there's one code if it's the same provider. Okay, delivery of twins. And this is a little complicated because this is the textbook, and it does explain to us how to code it. But these are usually, um, the guidelines are usually spelled out in each state by their state uh, guidelines on their website, like if I'm in Texas and it's texas.gov, and then I go to Medicaid, or and then I go to providers, and it breaks, breaks down how to code for delivery of twins and how they would like to see it and how they would like to pay for it. <coughs> Excuse me. The thing is when there's provider manuals as well that explain to the providers how to build and code certain things. So some things you're going to learn in class that may be 100% accurate, and there are some things that you learn in class that have a few variations when you actually get in the field and start doing it. So it says, payers differ on the reporting format. Basically, they want one CPT code with a modifier 22 for unusual procedural services, and that is what we report with the C-section, um, if it happens with the C-section, um, delivery of twins and 51 for so multiple procedures. So I have a big red note here, a light em up note. Cesarean delivery of multiple births is always coded using one code. And that's weird because um, I had, when I worked as, a, as an auditor for a CMS, and I had to determine if these procedures were coded accurately, um, I got into a huge, you know, I don't want to call it an argument, but debate between other coders who believe that it should be coded a different way. And I was like, oh, no, this is a cesarean, so there's one CPT code, and I had to search all over town for the, um, for the uh, state guidelines to kind of back myself up, you know, but um, there are times when you're going to be challenged when you do your coding, so just make sure you always have some type of documentation to help you, you know, with your coding decisions. So here's a note. Vaginal or vaginal cesarean deliveries have multiple ways to code depending on the third-party payer. So remember that. Okay, abortion services. We have four types of abortions. We have a spontaneous that happens naturally, and this is also called a miscarriage. Incomplete requires medical intervention, which is some tissue is passed, but some of it is not and still inside of the woman. Patient is usually seen for bleeding, um, unexplained bleeding. And then a missed abortion is when the fetus dies inside of the womb during the first half of pregnancy. And it is found usually by an ultrasound. Sometimes they don't know that they're pregnant, and they see it later. And then a septic abortion is an abortion with an infection, because usually a missed abortion is sitting there for too long, and the woman becomes infected and ends up being a septic abortion. Here's a reflection point. What are the four types of abortions, and why are they given? So remember, we have missed abortion. We have incomplete abortion, we have septic abortion, and we have spontaneous abortion, which is done, you know, basically a miscarriage, done naturally. All right, moving on, and that is the end. Here is a diagram of the female reproductive system. 
And the diagram of the male reproductive system can be found in the um, lecture for the urinary system. And uh, basically, we have all of these different parts. And there's probably some pictures like this in your textbook. I believe there are. You can uh, basically try to become more familiar with that, the terminology for it. And then, of course, when you watch the YouTube video, um, you will see a lot of different things done that will probably be very interesting. So here are some review questions. And let me go back. And um, these are things that you can ask yourself while you can um, see if you can answer um, on your own without going through the chapter to see if you've memorized some information um, from this presentation. If you cannot, then that will basically let you know what you need to go back and, and review and, and cover for yourself just so that you can have this uh, information you know, readily available if you ever have to pull it out for an assignment or, or, you know, terminology purposes. So I will leave this here for a few minutes so that you guys can see that, see these questions. And alternatively, you can also pause this presentation right here so that you can uh, write these answers of these questions down. And if you want to get some kudos points this week, you can answer these questions and send them to me in email form. Um, I will definitely send out a kudos to you guys for watching this and having this information accurately. All right. Let me move on. Any questions, you can send them to me in email or make a starfish appointment for Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday of this week. Thank you for watching. Have a great week.